Hello, and welcome to the Tiny Trailer Workshop. A fellow wood turner, friend and longtime supporter of the show, has yet again supplied me with some pallet wood for the competition. In addition, he also sent some video footage of the breakdown of this pallet. Thank you, Ron. Now I'm going to cut this up into more manageable pieces. And for this first piece, I'm going to put it on a glue block with some hot glue. So now it's time to straighten this out and get ready for the magic to happen. Three always seems to be a magical number, so let's start with that. And then in all the excitement, I forgot to have a camera running. Always the way, isn't it? But this is the way it would have looked. Now for number two. Hey now, that was the way that was supposed to work the first time. Well, almost. On to number three. And then we'll just do a little shine juice to see how it's going to look. I'm thinking pretty good. To get to the other side of this one, I figured the worm screw would be as good a choice as any. I guess I should have put it on the worm screw in the first place. Ah well, the glue worked anyway. That's one-third shellac, one-third alcohol, and one-third mineral oil. Now I'll just mount this second ring around the jaws here. And a little polish for that one too. Now we'll put the first ring around the shoulder of the chuck. Happy coincidence that this just happens to fit. And we'll finish it up too. A little more cutting to get the next pieces. For this one, it's just a matter of knocking off these corners and making a nice thin dowel. No measurements, 
just whatever looks good. This is the last piece that needs turning, and unlike the first ones, this is two pieces laminated to give it extra thickness. For this last piece, I hate to even mention it as it is flat, it does however have a round hole in it, so that must count for something. So let's see what we have here. These two go together, but before they do, a wand needs to have a feather to make it authentic. And I have a feather here from an eagle, voluntarily surrendered of course, and we'll just fit that in the handle here. a little glue and we're all set this part I'm afraid I got over excited and put it all together without even turning the camera on there is no great trick to it though you simply drill through one side of the largest ring with a 1 16th or 1 millimeter drill bit aiming at the center then find the spot directly opposite and drill that too now if you lay the second ring down in its proper orientation you can run the drill through to mark the landing spots on the, on that one. Once you have drilled about one eighth or a two millimeter deep holes in these spots, you turn the whole thing 90 degrees and mark drill all the way through, just the same as you did the first one. Now using a piece of 1 16th inch wire, you make axles and cut them to the proper, proper length so they're flush on the outside of the ring. Then put just a drop of CA glue on it, just to make sure that it stays there. And if you've drilled your holes right, you should be good to go. However, if you're like me and you get them a little off, you can make spacers too. Oh, and that flat piece? The handle of the wand fits into the hole so that you can stand your wand up while the time turner upgrade does its thing. My thanks again to Ron for his help in making this project. I couldn't have done it without you. And my thanks to you for watching. And we'll hope to see you all here again next time. Bye for now.